Oh, it's a huge, yes, yes, yes. But man, we got a beast. We got a beast of a fish on. Ooh, the water's low. Pelicans are dive bombing everything. But the bite's been pretty good this morning in a different spot nearby, so I'm kind of hopeful. Different set of gear today. So hopefully you'll be seeing this a lot more. This is the Abu Garcia 6601. You can see it there, C4 6601. 50 pound braid, 50 pound mono top shot, upgraded power handle on a good old fashioned ugly stick seven foot rod. And for bait, I've just got a small chunk of carp on a small circle hook. And of course there's still wire on there because there are still alligator gar in here. Despite the fact that it's kind of cold this time of year. So let's get this out there to see what happens. Let's drift it down. Can very nearly see the bottom actually. Fish on. Oh, that was a nice little catfish. Look at him flipping around. Still, this this rig is still um, too strong for that catfish to stand much a chance. But it is quite nice to actually feel a fish of that size on a, a rig like this instead of the usual monstrosities that I'm fishing with. Trade off, of course, being if we do end up hooking a massive alligator gar, which happens. This could handle it, especially in this environment, but the chances of losing it do go up. That's a nice, nice fish. Perfectly corner hooked. Let's get him up. Nice channel, cat. They're in here. I don't usually catch them because I'm usually fishing with much bigger gear. Um, and then a few months ago, I caught a huge catfish that might have been a channel, might have been a blue. Uh, hundreds of people have told me different answers. I honestly didn't know. I wasn't really paying attention. Usually I'm trying to figure out where the light is and the camera. But this is definitely a channel. Quite nice. Let's get it back. All right, this one might be a big fish. This thing took off. Oh, it's all the way over there already. Man, that is a fast fish. Gotta stop him. He's going for the snag, but no. We got him. Got him hooked. Oh, he might have. He might have got us tangled in something, because he's he's not coming any further. Is he gonna win this battle? No, no, you're not. No, you're not. Okay. Oftentimes, when you get snagged like this. Trying to force it out is the worst thing you can do. I'm gonna let the fish have a little bit of line. Oftentimes the fish will find its way around that snag. Yep, got it, boom. You just gotta be gentle. Come on. There we go, I'm not a huge fish. But man, he, uh, he fought good. He fought real good. Of course, I'm using lighter tackle. That's the whole point. It just makes catching fish like this so much more fun. Oh, yes. Nice blue. All right, two species down. Got a, a channel and a blue. And this is, honestly, 90% of what's down there. <laughs> Stridulation, really cool. Beautiful fish. Um, I am undecided. I, well, I think flathead are the prettiest fish, but there is room for argument for any species because they are all amazing. Really good looking animals. Somebody was telling me like, okay, here we go. Ugh. I don't like chucking the fish, but you guys can see that stripe on the ground. If I step on that, going in. Really important after having a snag like that, you just kind of check your line. I like to run my fingers over the whole length of leader to see if there's any kind of like really nasty cuts in the line that'll go if another big fish takes. But I think we're all right. Yeah. It must have been around something, you know, probably coated in algae. All right, playing with fire a bit here. I just cast right between two massive snags, one here, one there.
Ooh, I just saw a fish come up actually right there. He was, he was little, but he came up and went back down. A lot of the times you can tell what it's gonna be. If it's an alligator gar, the float will usually go straight to one of the edges and then start going down in a long run. And if it's a catfish, it will just instantly dive for one of these big, big piles of snags. It's like a, it's like a calling card. I mean, it really doesn't get more clear than that. Something has it, yep. Well, something's picking at it. There are a lot of small fish in here. I usually don't catch like, you know, small fish like this because I have gear that's fairly large. Okay, this fish has got it though. This fish is actually coming towards us. Oh, it's a huge, yes, yes, yes. <sighs> That's a huge catfish. Man, big fish. There we go, I'm having a little bit of trouble getting the FG knot through the guides i might have to go down to something smaller for the leader like 40 pound fluoro or even 50 pound fluoro probably be a smaller diameter than monofilament but man we got a beast we got a beast of a fish on yeah good fish Really nice fish. I knew I knew casting between these two snags was gonna be worth it. That much cover has to be holding something worthwhile. Now, fun part is, the nearest landing zone, which are either staircases or creases in the concrete, is over there. Which means we gotta work him back through the snag. Free spool, I'm using my thumb as a break. That way, if he starts going let's say he comes towards us towards this snag i'll just let go of the spool and usually when fish feel that release of tension they they capitalize and they'll go the other way so it's a nice trick to get a fish to go the other way when he's coming towards you but right now this fish is holding dead center which is perfect there we go i love this be able to control him with one hand like this Love this rig. I knew I was gonna love this rig when I got this new power handle on here Got a lot of uh, catfishing plan to do And this uh, you better believe this rig is gonna appear in those videos Ooh, pull and drag pull and drag What? He's a big fish <laughs> oh, Such a powerful animal Wow, it really does become so much more fun on this lighter outfit. The reason you don't see me using this all the time or stuff like it is because you hook into 150 pound alligator gar with this and you're going to get broken off, no question about it. Now that it's getting colder outside, the chances of catching a, a gar like that are smaller and uh, chances are that when you hook into something big, it's gonna be a catfish, which is perfect. Man, he's not, he's not getting tired. <laughs> My arms are getting tired. He's a beast. That is a big catfish. It's one of the bigger fish I've, I've personally caught from this spot. I say I personally, because I actually know someone who caught a 60 pounder out of here. Oof. Man, he, oh, no, 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 no. Going for the snags, going for the snags. No, oh my God, he's so powerful. God. I'm just gotta keep pulling him away from it. 
Oh, what a fish. What a fish. Oh, man. Oh, he's going downstream now. Another drawback with this lighter tackle is that, uh, you know, 50 pound braid, if it touches any of this junk, it is gone. Even 80 pound braid or 100 pound braid is not, you know, really made to take on abrasion. Uh, but you got a better chance with a good brand of braid if it's heavy to avoid getting cut off. But with 50 pound braid and smaller, I cannot let this fish touch anything with it. All right, we are getting close to the landing zone. Here he is. Man, he is a gorgeous animal. Really pretty. Got my grippers. Got my grippers. God, he's big. Oh, man, he's big. That is... That's not my PB catfish, but it might be my PB from this spot. It's hard to tell. I don't generally like to weigh fish or even measure them if I can help it. Um, it just takes too much time and I already dedicate a certain amount of time for the fish to be out of water just to show it to the camera. So I like to, you know, if I'm going to pick one or the other, I'm going to pick the camera. That's why I don't weigh fish a whole lot or measure them. It's also just more gear to carry. He's still going. Still going. God, can you imagine the fight on this thing if you hooked it with like a a, a regular bait caster? I think he probably would have cut me off by now if I'd done that. These these bigger Abu Garcias are kind of like they bridge the gap between a bait caster and a conventional reel. They really do. All right, it's getting close. I'm sorry that the sun is behind me. I usually like to fish the other bank when that's the case. God, he's massive. What a massive, massive fish. Whew. Oh boy. All right, let's see if I can work my way down to the leader. If I can grab a hold of the leader, I'll, I'll get him. And almost got him. Oh, got him. What a beast for an incredible fish. Absolutely amazing animal. Sorry about the weed eater behind me, but we're in the city. Incredible fish. Big fish. Let's get him back. Woo. All right, guys, we're gonna keep this one short today. A couple of good fish. One really amazing fish, big old catfish. Entangled, help. Love the new gear. Again, if you missed it, it is the GX2, seven foot casting, medium heavy, Abu Garcia, 6601C4. And yes, all my bait casters are left-handed. I use left-handed models. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Check out the link for these in the description. Waterland Co. Fishing Optics, great sunglasses. Use my code wildlife right here. Get 15% off when you check out. If you want loads and loads of extra videos or you want to know where I'm fishing and most of the spots that appear in my videos and how to fish them well, check out the link in the description for the Patreon page. Let me know in the comments what you want to see more of, guys. More is coming. Stay tuned. And until it's here, I will see you guys later. Just this video. Go watch this one right here. It's a good one. That video right there.